All right, I don't know if the projector is going to work, so um, we'll kind of get started here with a little bit of stuff to kind of get going. So I want to start off with and kind of find out uh, why did you guys come? I mean, what, 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 are you, what are you hoping to learn from this, this presentation? Because it just kind of helps me get a feel for different things, you know, what, what are you looking at? Um, go ahead. Uh, I'm kind of a back-end guy who's been forced into doing front-end stuff because nobody else knows how. Okay, I like uh, you already. So, <laughs> so I'm kind of looking for best practices and, and just to kind of improve overall the way that I do CSS since I'm really not a CSS guy. Okay. We have too many style sheets. They're too complex. We need to modularize them and compress them. I, I, I also agree. So. So discipline. hopefully discipline will, will be a big one. So, so hopefully some of the things, um, I, I'm also kind of a, a back-end guy, kind of got thrown into CSS. Um, kind of how this came about is I was working at a, my previous company called Grow Social, and they're like, hey, we need a CSS guy. At that point, all the developers just kind of ducked their heads and hid. <laughs> and then our manager said, okay, guys, you've got a day to think about it, but one of you has to decide <laughs> who wants to become the CSS guy. So uh, I kind of like, uh, well, you know what, I'll try it. And uh, so that's, that's kind of where the genesis of this talk came from. So a lot of the stuff that I want to present today is kind of some of that research that I started going into to try to figure out, you know, some of these issues that you guys have already brought up uh, with CSS and, and do that. Yes. Uh, so less is the one. So we'll be kind of going over that. But really kind of the, the concepts that I'm going to be talking about today, um, they're more, I guess, kind of general principles and different things that we can take. So, so probably not too... And we'll get into a little bit of the technical stuff to kind of just kind of get you guys to start going, um, depending on if this will work. Um, if not, you know, if we can just get this up and going, okay, I can yeah, I can work around it. and not do some console stuff. So, so that that'll work. Um, so let me come here and take a look at my notes. So, so the title of this is, you know, kind of creating a living style guide. Um, so in, in your guys' mind, what is a style guide? Who's, who here has worked with a style guide before? Okay. Uh, where generally does that style guide come from? Designers. I hate designers. Actually, I shouldn't say that. They're not responsive. I shouldn't say I hate designers. I hate how they send me the data. Um, I, I hate trying to go into Photoshop and trying to, trying to work that all out. And, and then invariably they do something crazy inside of Photoshop and they're like, why can't you do that on the web? And it's like, well, it's the web. You can't do that. We deal with boxes. Um, so so that's, that's kind of the genesis of where um, the, the designers, you know, they, they kind of at a, at a certain level control the lay, layout and look of, of the site. So, so with the style guide and kind of creating this inside of CSS, it, I'm hoping that it'll give us developers kind of a, a little bit more back and forth input into, you know, this is what works, you know, here's a place that you can go and look at and say, okay, this is what's actually possible here on the web. Um, how many of you have kind of used Twitter Bootstrap before? Okay, I love Twitter Bootstrap because the, what you're basically looking at there is a style guide. Um, so hopefully we can kind of get some tools here that we can go over and, and show you how to. So, not yet. so do you need this desktop or are you okay to use this while I work on this? Um, which whichever is gonna. Okay, I think I just need like well, two more minutes to get this. Okay, yeah. Um, if you can get that up and going, I can just kind of. Um, Perfect. Look at my slides here. Okay, so 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 a couple of things you know, the, the style guide is going to help us do. It's going to help us create uniformity. Um, a lot of times, how many of you have kind of seen this, or you've got a tight deadline, you've got to style something. Where does that style go in your style guide? Or not style guide, but the CSS. Okay, inline, we'll get to inline. That does happen, unfortunately. I, I'm, right, especially when you've got a tight deadline. And, the last CSS and the sequence. Right, it, you know, it's going to go in the last CSS, it's going to go at the bottom of the tile, bottom of, the, of that file, and soon all of a sudden you're like living in this hoarder's house, you know? I mean, you walk in, it's just like you start looking at the files and everything that you've got, and it's kind of like, you know, five guys before you, you know, up 100, 200 lines, they threw a bunch of stuff in there, you have no idea what it does. Because CSS, when you kind of start going through it and looking at it, um, it's, it's really hard to kind of, you know, just read the CSS file and say, okay, I know what that does, I know where that goes. Um, and if there are comments in there, you know, nobody knows what they actually mean. Um, I was hoping to, we'll, 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 we'll see here. Um, right now I'm working on a project um, that kind of got handed off to me. A bunch of other designers were in there, front-end designers and different things like that. And, you know, it's up over 2,000 different lines of CSS styles. And you're just kind of like, 
that's, that's just ugly. It's, you know, it's hard to deal with. It's not broken apart. And, and, and uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Not really. Um, the other thing that, uh, that the style guide is going to give us um, is going to help us to you know, handle disagreements about styles, how different things should be styled. Um, you know, part again, kind of looking at those things that get tossed over the wall from us from the graphic design department. You know, a lot of times they're not going to give us the hex colors. Um, so we go in there, we look at it, grab the hex color, you know, and say they're off a couple of digits. All of a sudden, our CSS starts kind of growing and mutating, and all of a sudden we have 20 different color reds in our CSS. And, you know, and, and there's slight differences, right? You know, most people aren't going to notice those, but, you know, one day the graphic designer is going to be on the website, and they're like, well, why are you using this color red? And you're like, well, that's the one you sent me. So I put it in. Um, the, who likes to argue with graphic designers about color? <laughs> I, <laughs> I <laughs> It's, uh, it's fun because it's like, really? We're, we're talking about this different shade of gray? I, I don't care. Um, so the style guide is, is going to help us to build the manual, basically for, for our layout. Um, kind of I have a saying, you can't tell people to RTFM if you don't have the M. Um, so, so that's going to help us kind of create the, that, that manual. You know what? I just realized this projector, this is like a really great object lesson. This is like working with CSS. Up, down, up, mm -hmm. down. Try again. <laughs> it's not working again. I, you know, you can spend like two hours getting just one little line in CSS working. You know, you're really excited about that. You get it working. And then you test it in IE, and then there goes your day. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Um, Let me see if I can get with me these services, but I think I'm at the end of my line. <laughs> okay. I, I may just turn my computer around and have everybody look at it okay. closely. But uh, or, actually, you know what? Does this turn? Oh. They don't want me to steal it. <laughs> Something like that. So. Uh, okay, so as I, as I was kind of starting to do this research, I came across um, what's called KSS. Um, it stands for Nile Style, Nile Style Sheets. Um, the guy that put this together, he works at GitHub. Um, he's kind of the brains behind um, TomDoc. Has anybody in here used TomDoc before? Okay, so TomDoc, um, it's used in, in Ruby uh, quite a bit for documentation. Um, and it's really nice, and it works really good for graphic designers also, because it's really human readable. Um, you don't have a lot of slashes and, and different things like that. I'm, I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. You do. Um, so on GitHub, a lot of the projects that you go to, and they have that README in there. It'll be the README.md. That's built in TomDoc. Um, so if you've ever looked at any of those files, that's, that's kind of TomDoc, uh, the styles. Um, Okay, so um, oh, this kind of sucks that the projector doesn't work. So, so the kind of the, the, the description of TomDoc is, or not TomDoc, but KSS, it's uh, documentation for any flavor of CSS that you love to write, human readable, machine parsable, and easy to, to remember. So the nice thing about KSS, if you're doing straight CSS, you can use it. You know, if you're doing less, um, SAS, those different types of things, this, this will work with it. Um, so with uh, KSS, it was originally uh, kind of built by a Ruby guy. Um, so there's Ruby gems out there. So if any of you are Ruby guys, um, you can use it. Um, I like Node.js because it's a little bit easier to get up and running on, on different environments. Um, so there's a fork of it, and, and that's kind of what I'll, I'll be talking about here today. That mouse doesn't work. OK, so the, the fork of this is uh, github.com, and then it's hu. So if anybody wants to look this up, so it's uh, github.com h-u-g-h-s-k slash k-s-s dash node. Um, it's very simple to install. Um, how many of you have played around with Node.js? OK, so, so good for a amount of you. You use the package manager. You do the npm install um, dash g k-s-s, and that will install it globally so that uh, you can use it. Um, let's 
see what we can do here. Yeah, so it's H U G H S K uh, slash K S S dash node. Um, and, and again, th this this technology it's fairly early. Um, as you look through the documentation, do different things like this. Um, you know, they'll say you know this is still pretty early type of stuff, but it, it works pretty good, and I think it'll give a pretty good standpoint starting point. Are your slides available online anywhere? Uh, they aren't. Oh, well, yeah. Actually, you know what? Let me see. I do have them. They are now online. Okay, so if you want to follow along, let me make sure this works here. I can use. Okay, so uh, if you want to follow along, kind of look at the slides uh, bit.ly, so bit.ly, and then 121k5, g as in George, and j as in jam. Okay, so it's bit.ly, so it's one. There's a marker right there. Just write it on the board. Where's the marker? Under this one. Under this one. Okay. Carefully looking for your convenience. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to write the end. On 21. And then it'll work. Okay. That's a K, sorry. I program, I don't write, so. Uh, no, it's a lowercase k. Does it matter? Okay, that's good to know. One, two, one, two. Sorry, I'm a little flustered here, so I'm not. <laughs> it's okay. And then it's an uppercase G and then J. So it's just bit.ly, one, two, one, K. So lower, lower K, sorry. One two one K G J. Yep. And that's all lower. So the K's lower. So that's lower case. These are upper case. K five. Did I see? There is a five after the K. Thank you. I'm sorry, guys. This is just kind of not going well. Okay. Found it. Got it. Apparently. <laughs> All right. I've actually never used it this way before, so. Um, okay, so, so kind of installed KSS. Um, one of the things that you'll want to do is, as you're kind of going through this, um, KSS kind of starts putting, that is really annoying, isn't it? Just turn it off. Yes, it is. Okay. Goodbye, projector. We didn't need you anyway. Um, so, so kind of the last structure there is kind of outline your structure. So how many of you are kind of working in a team on your CSS? So most of you have got multiple people in there. Um, you know, for, for single individuals, you know, you, you can usually kind of understand everything that goes into there so you can do whatever you want. You know, it's kind of like that, that hoarder concept, you know, the person that lives in that house probably knows where everything is and, and they're really comfortable there and, and that works for them. So wh why change that? Um, but uh, once you have to give it to somebody else, that's when the troubles come. So, so to outline your structure, um, something to do is just kind of to start um, here and uh, you know just do do an outline. You know what what are your buttons and, and different things like this um, going to look like. So let me actually let me give an example of this. 
Um, if, if you're pulling this up, um, do a Google search for GitHub uh, style guide. So if you want to pull that up here. I mean, again, so this, this technology is uh, built at GitHub, so they're going to use it. Um, so once you get there, you know, it's going to say it's dangerous to go along, alone. Uh, click the CSS style guide. Um, OK, so this is kind of uh, what, what you'll start seeing with, with kind of what KSS gives you the ability to do, um, is to start building pages like this. Um, so you can see on the left-hand side, you've got things kind of broken down in, into to sections. Um, so if we go into that first section, buttons, um, and you start looking at it, um, you'll kind of see okay, that they're displaying all the different types of buttons. And it's, what's really nice about KSS is um, as you're building and documenting out your, uh, your JavaScript, or not JavaScript, CSS, um, you can tell it, I want you to display these different states. So you can always see the different states that each element's going to have without having to you know, interact with it. So you, know, you can see the hover states of your button. You can see, OK, this is what it looks like when it clicks on it. Um, and, and that type of stuff. So then it, it helps you to kind of, you know, because a lot of times, you know, those pseudo elements and different things like that, you may miss it when you're styling something. Um, so the style guide kind of will help you kind of re refer back to it and kind of see, you know, what, what's available. Okay. So let's, let's go back uh, to the slides. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, I was actually just hoping to use this as an example very quickly. So it's KSS and CSS. Um, so this will kind of start showing what it, what it, how it looks like. Um, this is the Tom Doc, uh, kind of the style. So that first line, a button for giving stars to someone, that's going to that's going to start showing up in, in this um, in this document that we're going to build. Uh, you can see underneath that's called the modifiers. Um, so you'll have your your pseudo elements there hover. Um, the other thing that you'll see underneath hover is a dot stars dash given. Um, so you're going to have a, you can have a button or something like that um, that. You know, in addition to just a regular button, you're adding another subclass or another class to it that, that does something that, that gives it stars. Um, so that, that'll um, and uh, this is kind of hard to explain without seeing. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions while I kind of try to collect my thoughts here? <laughs> Why do you use less over others? Why do I use less over others? Um, mostly because Twitter Bootstrap was written in less, and I like to, to use Twitter Bootstrap. Um, yeah, it does make it easy to customize. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you was, you know, inside of less here, how you can change a color, um, and it you know updates throughout a document, and, and you can kind of see how that then would translate to to the so. To the to the style guide. Um, can you put us back in context? Where does KSS fit into the, the, the scheme of things? Is, okay, is it so it's, it's a flow. The way the less runs and it's kind of compiling out from the same source of different. Yeah, things? so so since we can't see it, so kind of the workflow of it is um, you're you're going to build your style guides the same way. So so really, what you want to do with developers and anybody like that, you, you don't want you want to kind of minimize. I think as you know, Rasmus said in the keynote, you want to minimize as many systems. Not was wasn't Rasmus that was the MySQL guy, as many systems as possible. You know, if if the, if you're telling your developers or your designers, okay, now you have to go over here and kind of create. This, this other thing to kind of keep this, this document. And that's part of the reason why it's called a living style guide. And so once, once they're kind of, you've documented this in um, your, uh, your CSS, then you'll just run a command line, kind of just like with less. And then it'll create a new directory that just dumps kind of like this, this pre-built website for you. Just kind of like what we saw in GitHub, it'll take that same type of thing, dump it out. Um, th they have the ability for like, you know, if you don't like the template, the default template, you know, you can kind of give it a different template to, you know, more fully match, you know, what what your site's going to kind of look like and, and fit inside there. Um, so yeah, so so you know, a, so a possible workflow, you know, you could set something up with Node where, you know, where it watches for like um, the less files or anything like that to change, you know, so. Then once that happens, it can fire that off and then update the style guide for you. And then so it's just kind of automatically done. Um, you can go back to that style guide now at this point, double check, make sure um, that your changes doesn't doesn't affect anything else. So it kind of also gives you a nice quick way to do a quick uh, visual check to make sure that uh, 
the style change that you make didn't affect anybody else. Who's ever done that? You know, change something and then on page five it uh, completely broke something else. Um, the project I'm working on right now, it's kind of like whack-a-mole. You know, we kind of fix one CSS <laughs> issue and then five others pop up and you're just kind of like, why? <laughs> and it kind of makes you want to cry sometimes. But, uh, so where is it getting its content from? So it's, yeah, so it's the comment line, so it's that, that TomDoc structure. So if you look at, um, let's go back and kind of look at the, we'll kind of go through this a little, a little bit here. Um, so the style, so we'll start at the bottom. It's kind of, kind of weird. So style guide 2.1.3 on there. Um, so that's telling us, okay, this is where this particular block of code fits inside our style guide. So you can kind of start seeing, so above this in the comments, you probably have a style guide 2.1.1. Um, with, with, the, with, the, with the information that uh, is relevant to, to that style, to that particular style. So the, the common best practice that they say in here for using KSS um, is each kind of uh, individual kind of block one should probably have its own kind of dot notation there. So if you're displaying a, a certain type of button, you know, that should have a 2.1.3 or 4, whatever it is that um, is there. Um, so the other, the other nice thing, um, so the, the Ruby version, and, and this is kind of um, doesn't, what it doesn't do, and because and, they, they get around this a different way with using Ruby. Um, in, in the Node version, you can actually put, um, so you'll do inside this, you can even do kind of a template tag. So you'll do template colon, and then kind of put in what the HTML is supposed to look like. Um, for using this pr particular style. So not only does it kind of help you document your style guide, but it can also help you kind of start documenting, okay, you know, for this import form or these forms, this is, this is the actual HTML structure that we want them to have. So it gives you kind of a place to start going back and looking at and saying, um, that's, uh, that's, that's how it should be set up so that when, you know, style changes happen, it, it doesn't uh, break anything else. Okay. So the next slide, I'm not going to get into too much without the monitor, um, the KSS and less, um, just because it was something that I was, I was hoping to be able to, to show in there. Um, okay. So the other thing that the, so let's, I'm jumping down to the guidelines for KSS a little bit. Um, the other thing that the KSS node version gives you um, is they, they've kind of used that uh, readme.md. So so in your structure, you'll have, um, you'll have your style sheets um, and whatnot. Um, you'll run, um, so, when you go to, so when you go to compile it, you'll tell it, okay, this is the directory where everything is. Um, this is the directory where I want everything to go to. So in that directory where everything is, if there's a, a style guide.md file, that'll kind of uh, create kind of like that splash page that we first saw on the, on the GitHub uh, style guide. So that becomes a really good place for you to kind of start documenting okay, your best practices for, for your group, you know, how things are going to work. So when the new guy shows up, you know, you can actually point him to this place and say, you know, here's some documentation, um, start reading that and, and kind of figure out, you know, kind of the, you can start uh, putting in your standards. And, and, and so that's kind of the, the thing that I was, I was looking at, you know, there's a lot of best practices out there for CSS. So really it's kind of trying to figure out, you know, what's going to work for your group the best. Um, at the end or at the bottom, you'll see I, I have a bunch of different links um, at, at the slides to, to a whole bunch of different talks and presentations. So you can kind of start getting a look at and see, you know, how do you want to start structuring that? Um, so the readme.md gives you kind of a good place. You know, at a certain point, it's just kind of like a wiki front page for, for your style guide. So then anybody can go in and, and change and edit that. Um, So at this point, I wanted to show you how it all kind of works, kind of go through that workflow. Um, but since I can't really show you that, let's, let's kind of um, let's talk about some CSS. You know, I may not have all the answers, but I, I, I think there's a lot of smart people in the room here today. So let, let's talk about, you know, what are some of your pain points with CSS and, and dealing with it? And, you know, what, what are some things you guys are doing, you know, to handle, I guess, kind of the complexity that it all, that kind of evolves from CSS? Anybody want to? Jump up and go ahead. Maybe you guys have already covered this because I'm coming in late, but constantly having to fix all the different variations of browsers, and you know, we'll have some some little things set up. Works in Chrome on Windows, 
And then we have to test some Firefox on Windows, and it turns out it doesn't work on Chrome on Mac. Okay. I, I don't know if we're ever going to get away from that. Um, Unfortunately, you know, unless IE decides to adapt, adopt WebKit like everybody else seems to be doing, which would be nice, but that's not going to happen. Um, but uh, Google's working on WebKit. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's true. That's, that is true. Well, even if Internet Explorer worked, that'd be better, but right. still I'm getting problems between, you know, like, like I said, Chrome, we have problems where Chrome, it looks fine in Chrome on Windows, but not in Chrome on Mac. Yeah. Like that. weird. Is it a different version? Mm -hmm. That could be your font stack. Yeah, I mean, so there's there's a whole th lot of things. So you know, so so when you say font stacks, what are you, what are you talking about so for people that may not uh, know what you mean there? Fonts. It's more of a clear type rendering issue <coughs> yeah. for Windows compared to other operating systems, but that will work your CS all over the CSS all over the place. Yeah, I think I think it was font related, is, but some of the stuff we might have been So yeah, so fonts that, that's a whole other session that could happen with just browser inside of CSS. Is dead, long live browser sniffing. Huh? Browser sniffing is dead, long live browser sniffing. <laughs> <laughs> um Margins. Collapsing margins. Uh, do you have examples online of um, like the less source files that were used to create a style guide that we can put Yeah, so kind of what I what I used was um, just that, that repository that I gave you. Um, most of my examples were based off of that, so you could go and kind of you know grab that, play around with it. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a basic. Just you know, there are a couple things in there. To, you know, really just to kind of get you started and going. So if you clone that, it has the demo repository. Um, you can kind of go in there, and play around with that, and, and um, mess around with with some of the things there. Huh? So that was. If, do you have the slides open? So it should be slide number five has the link to the the GitHub account that that has has all that in there. Um, you know, the documentation there, it's pretty good enough to kind of get you up and going and, and running real quick. So it's, it's kind of a, a great place to play. Yes? If you, uh, if you had a bunch of Chrome and received CSS, uh -huh. and you were just stuck in this approach, how would you bring that into that? How, how would you? How would you, how would you kind of start using moving? Order to the chaos that's already yeah. <laughs> well, the easiest is just to throw it out and start over, but well, that's not ever the easiest, no. Um, so, so kind of, you know, starting again with that, that outlining um, section. Um, and probably what, you know, I thought a little bit about this as I was kind of looking at this other one, you know, this other 2,000 line file that I'm in, and, you know, it's like, how am I going to start breaking that up? Um, and I think it's really, you kind of got to start with that outline and kind of say, okay, these are the different elements that we have, right? Um, so you start there, just kind of a quick, you know, Google Doc. Throw your all, throw all your team in there and say, okay, this is how we think we should outline structure everything. Start there, you know. So it kind of gives you like this roadmap that you can build. Um, and then once you have that in place, you know, as, as people go through CSS and start adding stuff, they can look at that and say, okay, this new thing that I'm adding should probably actually go into here, you know, and start building it over time. Because I think if you try to do it all at once, you know, most of us don't have the time to be able to go through and, and do that at once. So you've got to, got to take a phrase, gradual approach to it. Um, and then, you know, maybe you spend 10 minutes each day just trying to, you know, knock out each one of those sections, going through the CSS and say, okay, let's find everything that applies to this section and start moving it into that, into that section in our CSS code. So stopping to stop, kind of, you know, find anybody that just adds stuff to the bottom just because they do and then, you know, whack them on the head, you know, once you get that in place. And, uh, at a previous place that I worked, if you know we had a we had a dunce uh, vest, so like if you did anything stupid like that, you had to wear the vest all day. <laughs> um, that, that becomes a, a 
a humiliation factor. Probably not the best one, but you know we had fun with it. Um, <laughs> but uh, that that can that can people's feelings can get hurt there. And, but anyway, we had fun. Um, so, so I guess that's what I'd say is kind of look at it and figure out how you do it in a phased approach because it's it's it really is. I mean, you start looking at it, you're cleaning up a huge mess that is just. You know, when you, you touch one line, you know, it can affect all sorts of things all over the place. Any other questions or thoughts? And, uh, yeah. In terms of ownership of something like this, is this thing owned by the designer or just the developer? Who owns this, this artifact? I, I think it, it needs to be more of a collaboration between the designer and, and the developer um, at, at a certain level. Um, I, for me, my personal opinion is I'd prefer the developers to own it, at least the, the, the style guide, the CSS, and be able to, you know, once you get that in place, to say to the designers, okay, these are how all our elements work and look on the page. If you want to mock up a new page for us, you know, it needs to fit within these contexts and you, and you can use these different things. And if, you, if there's something here that you don't see that you'd like to do, let's talk about that. Because then that can kind of start that conversation of like, okay, what you're <coughs> thinking about, how practical is that for us to actually implement and do? Because um, a lot of times, you know, you'll get stuff from a designer and it's just like, you know, they spent 20 hours on it or whatever, and you're just like, well, this, this is impractical. You know, it's going to take us 100 to 200 hours just to build this one little widget that you mocked up just because of the way that you've laid it out. So, so I think, you know, the, the, the CSS style guide, yeah, it's going to be owned by the developers because they're going to be the ones that are creating it. You know, the, you're not, most designers aren't going to get in and, and update the CSS and that type of stuff. If, if you have a designer that's doing that, it may make sense for them to own it, um, but it'll probably make sense for the developer to own it and kind of start putting that uh, structure in place. Yes? Uh, the other problem that you run into is if the designer owns it and the programmer who is actually putting the code in place is using it and they don't see what they want, they'll just start shoving in line stuff in their own I mean, Right. And so, <coughs> yeah, I think it makes more sense for the designer or the I mean, it, like you said, it depends on the environment. It depends on the strengths and weaknesses of the programmers and the and the designer. But right. Well, I mean, we have that issue where the designer wrote the the CSS but didn't do any good um, organization and design of the CSS, and so you just get a bunch of uh, mixed up, jumbled CSS code handed off to the programmer. The programmer doesn't even understand what's in there. And so there, there's a real disconnect between the person who created the CSS and the people that are actually trying to use it because there's no clear documentation or reusability to all the styles because it was created by someone who is not actually a programmer, doesn't know how to organize data in a usable way. Right. Well, and even if he is, where it gets used at, you know, like you said, you, you, you use it over here, or you, you, you change something over here and it breaks these other five pages that you're not thinking of. Your designer doesn't, a lot of times your designer doesn't go through and design every single page. He comes up with a concept and then the programmers will use that concept over and over for different areas. So when he goes in and mucks with a style, it may break everything out here and he, he's could, none the wiser. Yeah, the CSS was never used. Where the implementers would understand that. Right. Reusable. Does KSS help you? Having a where used uh, it doesn't I guess it doesn't help you with that as much as you know what what it's trying to do is it's trying to break things out in modular so you know you can kind of say okay I'm, I'm using buttons here okay I now know where to go in the CSS to look at and, and fix these different things so so the concept is is you know it kind of gives you a map if you, if you want to think of it that way it's not going to say okay this is where everything's used um, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the best way to explain it, but it, yeah, what I think about it. Is it kind of like, what is, from what I've read, it seems like it's almost like Java doc is to Java. Right, that, yeah. That, so it uses kind of like the Tom doc, Java doc type of, type of mentality. So it's a, it's a way to document things. So, you know, yeah, so it's like you're building your map yourself. Um, it's not going to tell you where things are. It's going to tell you how things should be put together. And once you know that, you know, if everybody follows that, it should be fairly easy to kind of go through and say, okay, this is where things have been used, you know, as you look through the pages. But it's, it's not going to say, okay, I want to know where this style is used on all the pages. It's not going to do that. Is it going to sort out things that were, for example, you've got a localized exception to the general rule for buttons? Is it going to pull all those together and the page three version of the button is different than the generic button? Um, 
Yeah, so if you, if you document it, then it should pull that onto like on page three of like your style guide. Is that kind of what you're asking? So if I give you... It's using the style guide numbering system to pull yeah. everything together? Yeah, so it's using that style guide numbering system to pull everything together. So you may you know, put something down a little bit further and give it a, a number and it could pull that up into, the, into there for you. I haven't actually tested that. I've just done everything sequentially because I, I was able to start from scratch. So that, that, that made it nice. Yes? So... Are you going to have to maintain a separate uh, style guide, uh, CSS or less file, when doing this? No. Well, so, the reason I ask that is I'm looking at the examples here on their site, and they overqualify all their selectors to kind of tell the style guide what type of element to apply the style to, which is going to create major specificity issues. So it almost seems like you would want to create a separate style guide to avoid CSS specificity issues. So, so it does create its kind of its, its so what it's creating is its own self-contained uh, style guide. So what it's not putting out, what, what KSS is not, it's not putting out the stuff that's actually going to go up and run your web server. Okay. So it's kind of creating like this, this self-contained thing so that it can display, you know, it needs that specificity so it can actually display the different types of, of things there inside there so that you can see it. Yeah, but wouldn't that still require me to create another style sheet just with the overqualified stuff? Uh, so, so KSS actually does. It goes through and creates those those style sheets for you. So when you when you run the command to generate it, it'll go through. You know, look at your look at your CSS, um, kind of parse all that data out, create this new directory for you, create a CSS file for you, um, create your index.html files, um, put the data in there, and and create that all for you. Does that answer your question, or is uh, that sort of? I mean, we can talk afterwards about it. Okay. I think. Okay. Do I actually like CSS? Do I actually like CSS? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I like CSS when it works. That's right. Those of us who remember doing web development without CSS, I think it's amazing. We love tables. Except for when we have to use it. <laughs> CSS is horrible. It's almost as bad as not having CSS. That's right. You didn't, you didn't like out. Yeah. You didn't like mapping images. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I think that's about time. So, if, if you have any other questions, feel free to kind of stick around and ask me. And if not, hop off for lunch. And sorry that the projector didn't work. I, I think that would have answered a lot of questions.